Yes, of course, he, go on. He, yes. Uh, okay, so <laughs> yes. he's... Yep, what do you need? Yep. So he's... Yep. Yes, um, he's... Yep, yep. I don't know. I'm what do you, so what do you mean you don't know? What, what do you I mean? I don't that understand. Makes perfect sense. Didn't he kill the darkness? Okay, all right, so... Wasn't that the point of putting the clicker in her and exploding it? Yes, so basically what happened is... Um, Barbara Jagger, who was the the basically the face of the darkness, um, so yeah. kind of the darkness the darkness can take multiple faces, but it can only it can only sort of have a I guess like a figurehead like a masthead. Um, yeah, yeah. It can only really sort of put all like its self self into one person. Um, uh -huh. Everybody else is sort of like just shades. Like it's the reason they repeat certain things. They don't they don't actually talk to you because if if she yeah, could be yeah. like if she be four hundred and seven you know, Barbara Jaggers or whatever, all she needs to do is just give them all a knife and have them charge you at the same time. Um, yeah. She can only control a certain amount. She can only, you know, they're, they're limited. Um, mm. So what he did is, uh, what Alan did was wrote... What originally had happened is that Tom Zane in the 70s or whatever had mm -hmm. basically been this prolific writer who was in this cabin that you're looking at right now, who yeah. was there to... Depends. Uh, anyway, so he was there basically, you know, to be cool and to write cool stuff. Um, mm -hmm. He connected. Uh, he connected with along with his wife. He connected with the like the darkness in the lake. The darkness in the lake took Barbara, um, and basically like wore her skin to try to get him to, you know, write it more into existence. He did. Um, he did for a certain amount of time. Realized that it wasn't Barbara. Cut her heart out and then basically imprisoned them both. Um, so he kind of like locked the darkness back away, um, right. thinking, "Hey, that's cool. Nothing will ever be able to, you know, dig us back out again." It worked for a while. Um, they had little bits where it sort of like was summoned back into existence, like um, with the uh, the Anderson brothers, like with the uh, old gods of Asgard, um, and then it would basically have ripple effects, but it wouldn't. It didn't. They weren't prolific enough to bring the darkness back. Um, and because they they were too their brains were too addled because they were core musicians, um, they they didn't really have what it took to bring the darkness back. Um, right. So it basically sat down and sat down, trapped away, going like, okay, cool, I'm going to save up basically everything I possibly can. Um, when Alan came, uh, it basically went, cool, I see the perfect vessel, jumped out, um, wore Barbara, brought the um, the illusion of the cabin back, stole his wife. Um, tried to extort so that it would write, you know, the darkness into, you know, out into the real world. Um, super powerful because he was such a dark horror writer. So it was just like, mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's the perfect one to bring us out. Um, you saw But was he happened. a horror writer? I thought he was like an action writer. No, he's a horror writer. So basically oh, okay. he writes, he, he writes, he writes he horror stories. Yeah, well, he writes horror stories, but um, he his most popular run were the Alex Casey's, which are like murder mysteries. But the idea yeah, that okay. they are like serial killer stories, so they're gruesome. Like, there's, it's not just mm. um, like you know a standard murder mystery. They're just like horrible things. He didn't yeah. have um, uh, and because his start was with Night Springs, he had a very like fantastical element to his um, mm. to his writing. Uh, Anyway, so it, it tried to trap him, as you saw. You saw all that sort of thing. It kept taking more and more people, and the reason it could is because uh, when he originally dived in after her, um, mm -hmm. it basically grabbed him. It went, cool, you can have her back if you write like this, this perfect book, this manuscript or whatever that will basically say, and then the darkness escaped and then took over the world and the world was fucked. Um, right. Because that's the kind of books, like the kind of like horror he'd write. You know, like mm. bad things happened. There was like a, a bad thing happened to good people, which was mm. the point of bringing in Alex Casey because he wasn't a bad person. He was mm. basically a good person at heart who had to be heard to do terrible things in order to make good, like, I guess, abide by his conscience. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that was fine. But then uh, Alan managed to escape for a split second when Tom Zane basically sacrificed himself to give him a, give him a moment. Um, he stole the car, like he escaped, he stole the car, he crashed it, um, and then he was kind of on the run since then. The manuscript got scattered by Zane, that was like his last thing. Um, that's why you keep coming, you keep finding the manuscript pages, that's why the darkness tried to get that guy who was extorting you, like pretending to have your wife, to, mm -hmm. um, uh, like to get the manuscript all together again, because it was like, okay, well I can't use it if I don't have it. Yeah. Um, and then it was all over the place. So it tried to gather things up, um, 
faster than him. That's why Nightingale had a whole like had pages. Um, mm -hmm. It used everybody that she, that it could to collect them. Um, then basically, Alan, uh, when he had the clicker, he, you know, he went went and got the clicker or whatever. The reason that the clicker was in the book is because he wrote it in. Um, but technically, I mean, he made he made Tom write it in technically um, because it had no reason to be there. Um, like he kind of just the, because of the rules of the narrative, he couldn't just write something like. And then Alan pulled out. Then Alan went to the shop and pulled out the ultimate darkness killing mm. weapon. Um, yeah. He had to he had to involve it in ground it in reality. So he used Tom Zane uh, Tom Zane's story, the fact that he actually was there, and it actually did happen in real life, um, and basically wrote in the fact that he'd put a clicker there, the clicker there. So is or Tom chilling in weapon. the cabin too? No, Tom's dead. Tom is way dead. Uh, oh, is in like in in the darkness? Yeah. Uh, yes and no. Um, so Tom, Tom has been down there for so long, he doesn't remember where he starts and it ends. Um, he's embraced it to the point where, well, not so much embraced it. He's he's been touched by it to the extent where his mind is completely shattered. Um, it worked for him in a way because he was already like one of those really tortured poets. Like he's fucking insufferable. Like actually, yeah. as a character, he's in in. There's a development of him further down the track, uh, like in Alan Wake 2, and he's absolutely fucking insufferable. Um, there's more of him in uh, the DLC, which we'll have to play because otherwise, you know, you won't quite understand the last little bit elements because everybody, yeah. a bunch of people went, we don't really like this ending as it is. Um, we just want yeah. to see a little bit more to bridge the gap, and they went, yeah, okay, we'll do it. So there's two more DLCs, but they're really short. Um, right. Okay. But, so uh, how did so if Tom's not in the thing? Sorry, if Tom's no. not in the thing, how did he write the clicker into the story? Okay, so Tom never wrote the clicker into existence. Um, uh -huh. Alan Alan did. He wrote that Tom wrote it in. Like I, I, no, well no, he wrote that Tom put it there, um, and right. because it was in Alan's manuscript, Tom Zane in the past put the clicker there. Um. um so that's that's kind of what I, what it means by, and it's very important because in the like later on through the whole like at heart, whatever Alan writes when he's attached to the darkness because of the very nature of the of the, the space like the metaphysical space so to speak, anything mm -hmm. he writes it has to be grounded in reality so it has to be able to be true, right. um, but he can bend he can bend reality but he can't make it so he can't write. Um, uh, like a like somebody who never existed he can't write like you know. Uh, Bob Flugel um, was, you know, the best guy in the world. He, you know, had pockets full of sunshine and whatever. Like, you can't yeah. write someone who doesn't exist. Um, right. So he latched onto whoever he knew who had a tie to the actual area, who actually had a tie to the actual darkness, Tom Zane, because he'd heard the stories, yeah. Um, yeah. and then used him, like, wrote he, and changed his past. Um, right. Yeah, so... Uh, so that's where the Night Springs thing comes from, because they were all people who were in the area in the 70s when Tom Zane was there, so they had that connection for him to then... Like her dad, like the sheriff's dad and stuff yes. like that. Oh, yeah, as in, like, you know, so the, the, word, like the, secret, the, the word the Night secret Springs? Yes. Yeah, yeah, the word yeah, Night yeah, Springs, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the code yeah. word, the Russian yes. spies. <laughs> the Russian spies. So they, like... Yep. Yeah, yep. so he was... So because they were there at the time, he could sort of go... I can write them into the story because they were here and they were sort yeah. of a part of it. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so um, Rose is a really interesting example, and you'll see her continuation. So, Rose is, is she the new lamp lady? N sort of. So she's she, oh, actually no, ex she, exactly right. She's exactly the new. She lamp was because she was like Holding lamp lady, lamp. and this one was the side person, and now she's like the. Yeah. She's doing it right now. Yeah. 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 So who um, was standing behind? Was it Nightingale, Nightingale or was it Nightingale, Hartman yeah. that was standing behind her? Nightingale. Nightingale. Okay. okay. So um, it's kind of misleading. Um, at the end of Alan Wake, like at the end of this one, uh, the way that it shows that sequence, and I can't remember exactly if it changes it in the extras, um, in the DLCs, but the way that it's sort of presented is that at the end of it, Alan wrote himself into the like he did the same thing that Tom Zane did. So basically, mm. Tom wrote. Um, and then I never existed. It's like, and then nothing happened. Um, none of these people died. I locked myself away with the dark, like with the darkness. That is the end. Right. Um, so basically, he again took Zane's example and went, okay, it's gonna need something. Like I have to exchange something, like rules of narrative. I ha I can't just take everything and have a happy ending because that's not how horror works. 
Um, so you have to have some sort of sacrifice. And so he went, I'm willing to sacrifice myself to save my wife. Did that. Um, the reason that the, it had like the, the time lapse thing is because he in his manuscript he went, he basically wrote it back in time. So she went into the water. She was in the water uh, like just long enough for the sun to come up. And then she mm -hmm. came out of the water the same day. Right, so as far as the outside world knows, and the world knows, Alan went with his wife to, like, you know, two Bright Falls. Um, mm. Something happened, like, something happened out there that she never quite explains. Um, she, when she first comes back, has stories of darkness and everything. Barry kind of backs it up, but at the same time, he doesn't really stick to it because he doesn't want to be uh, basically laughed at. Um, but they, they have the memories. They have memories of it. Um but they're kind of in that in-between state. It's like the same uh, when Tom Zane wrote himself out, the reason there's still a bunch of people that were able to be activated by the term Night Springs is because a bunch of them still have like vague memories of what actually happened. So things like, you know, there was this whole thing in the 70s and they go, okay, what? And, go, and everybody, like the entire world goes, oh yeah, it was a volcanic eruption. It destroyed the, um, the cabin. And they go, hmm, I don't quite remember it that way, but I guess... Hmm because they've been touched by it they were there for parts of it um right, but they okay. can't remember exactly so just something's something's funky something's weird they have two memories existing at the same time um it's kind of like it's the reason that so many people after this or whatever walk, walk around and they're kind of like yes this is this is great dude are you all right what oh, oh yeah shit yeah yeah okay cool yeah because they yeah. just they like they, they've been touched. They've got two timelines, basically. Like they've they've been touched by the darkness. It, it affects them, and then after that, they're never quite the same. Um, yeah, because so she at the end of checked the... out. Who Rose? Rose. Yeah. Okay, so after Rose is the best because Rose Rose got touched by the darkness, um, and she came out of it determined. Um, you'll kind of see what I mean. Um, but yeah, she's she's one of the coolest characters because she she's one of the few people who when she had the two memories she had the two conflicting she went like mm. um i'm absolutely you know that i know what i saw you know she's like mm. you know no i know that that was true even though it is impossible i know that that's true i know that yeah. alan was here i know that alan spoke to me i know that alan needs me yeah um i know that alan went in i know he saved us all um i refuse to give up on him so she went right. completely. She went completely off the rails to everybody else's understanding because they're like, "What? That writer that disappeared? Come on, he's got to be dead. It's been a long time." Yeah. Um, you know, he drowned. Everybody knows he drowned. Like something happened to his wife. You know, him and his wife. Maybe they went on a boat or something. Like you know, he was always a loose cannon. He was always partying. He was always drinking, doing that sort of stuff. So something happened. Uh, he he went into the like he went in the water. He didn't come out. We never. They never found his body. Um. Alice came out with some, like, you know, ramblings about the darkness, but it was a terrible thing. You know, she had a traumatic night, and then she woke up underwater, pretty much. Um, mm. So, that's kind of that's kind of the setup. Um, that's kind of the yeah the the backstory of it. The okay. the darkness the darkness is kind of sealed away. The only problem is, um, and part of the reason that you see that moment where Scratch is standing next to him um, is that. The, loop, the loophole that the darkness exploited was that you can only have one face. But what it yeah. can do is it can kind of mimic the people, like kind of mimic other people to an extent. Um, so basically it used the fact that Alan swapped to put not a not a, not a completely fizz, I don't want to ruin anything. Um, but basically to put a shadow of himself out in the real world where it can wreak semi-havoc. Why didn't it just take Alex's face? Alice's face. Alice's face? Um... You want the, sh the short version... Like, why didn't it just go, hey, Alice really wants you to write this thing, so why don't you just hang out with Alice and write this thing? Uh, she's... <laughs> there's, actually, there's actually two... two elements to that. The first is... Does it get explained? Not really. I mean, Not it's, really. it's kind of it's kind of in the reading. No, it's kind of in the reading. Um, okay. So in the in the reading, there's there's two elements. There's a sad element and a good element and a happy element. So happy element is uh, because it tried, but that was kind of Alan's line. Like he when he was writing the manuscript that it demanded, he refused. Hmm. He refused uh, at any point to say that the darkness had power over Alice. 
So he just, no, no matter what, no matter how under the influence he was, it, he would not give it power over Alice. So Alice was completely untouchable in everything that, it, that he wrote. So that's the nice one. Um, the sad part, the sadder part is um, the darkness only takes faces of people who will influence the story and who are muses. Um, you know, who, who it can actually use directly to inspire, um, you know, mm. the creation of a certain thing. Um, knowing that it knows the history because it took Alice, it can sort of le look into your mind when, once it's there. Um, mm. It looked into the fact that in the past two years, she had not managed to inspire him at all. Um, and basically, they were at the worst stage relationship-wise they'd ever been. Um, and went, well, you are not useful to me. I will not take you. You do not have control. You do not have control or sway over your husband, and that is what I need. The only thing you are useful for is as a trading piece. There's no point taking you. There's no point actually possessing you and using your face. But the reason he did all of this was because of her inspiration. Well, the only reason he did this is because he didn't want, like, he wanted to save her. Um, yeah. that's, like that's the inspiration for, like, for going in. Like, for, like, because at heart, you know, she is his muse. It's just all the darkness saw was what had happened previously. Because it couldn't look into him properly. Um, yeah. It couldn't, because it can't take over you completely. It can only give you a canvas to write on. Um, like, to create on. Because if it took over him completely, then it would have to be, it would have to write everything. And it doesn't know how. That's why it needs to take people who can. Um, so it can never possess him entirely. Um, well, yeah, it can never possess you entirely. <laughs> Sorry, it's it's that, that's a little bit complicated. Had she? So she had called Hartman. She had called. Was that Hartman. bit real? Yes, that was that bit was real. So and she um, thought Hartman would help. Yes. And Hartman um, was like, "You're a crazy psycho. Your wife's fine. Hang out with me and write a book." Uh, no. Um. Okay. Not exactly. So so she okay. had. Well, Alice had called. Okay, so Alice, Alice called spoiler, Hartman. No, 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 it's fine. Yeah. Um, so Alice had called Hartman uh, and basically said, hey, you know, I want you to help out with this. He'd gone, yep, sick, absolutely, you know, bring him in, we'll totally do that. He went He went, and immediately saw, because, I mean, part of part of his facility and his training and all that, um, like all his jargon, is he wants to exploit people. Um, mm. Like, so the people that he helps, these musicians, these artists or whatever, he uses their creativity to try to make himself money mm. um which i mean like there's i i think there was some sort of implication in a previous thing like in a in one of the pieces of writing um as well that he didn't even write the majority of his that book the creator's dilemma mm -hmm. um which is what he's best known for um like there was there were there was a psychiatrist or a psychologist or whatever who had gone a little bit loopy that was in getting treatment with him when he came up with the book um so you know that kind of thing so he basically saw okay. money he saw money signs he went like cool okay no worries um he he had he had an i can't remember exactly whether he had an inkling uh like he somehow knew the, the person who was going to blackmail him or something um but at heart he knew that after when when Wake came along or whatever, he found him in a delusional state. Um, mm. He came along originally or whatever to talk to them both. He didn't find her. He found him. Mm. Um, and uh, from what he'd seen or whatever, and what Alan was saying, he was basically like, you know, oh, you know, where's Alice? Where's Alice? Um, Alice had obviously gone missing because at that point, like Sarah had found him, like the uh, sheriff breaker had found him, and he was already delusional. Yeah. And it was weird and. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so he already knew that something had happened, his wife was gone, um, and now he's ranting about the darkness and creating things. So yeah. he took his chance to basically gaslight the shit out of him um, and mm. pretend that he'd been there for a while and he was suffering from delusions. He should just write and then he'll feel better. Um, and your wife's dead, so stop looking for, stop finding that as an excuse to not write and stop like focusing on that, focus on writing instead. Um, when Alan was too smart for that, 
like to I mean he did drug him so to start with it was mm. working um, but then he made he got too arrogant and he sort of just left it for too long and then the longer it waited and then of course the darkness came and fucked the place up so he didn't believe in the darkness for a second um, and then the darkness got him um, but yes so that that was real um, but I can't remember how he knew where he was going to be um, and you know like to, and to grab him um, I think mm. honestly he I think the story was honestly he went to see them um, he was supposed to meet up with both of them anyway um, he got impatient because you know he wanted money he wanted to get mm. started uh, went to see them found Alan basically freaking the fuck out and went like cool mm. perfect this will work and then made it work um, and then his facility got destroyed yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, except, the, the, except, the <laughs> except it's not because Alan then wrote that everything was fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. So some people never punished. Other people very punished. Um, I really hope that I'm not spoiling things, um, but uh, it's it's a bit misleading because I'm not. I can't remember exactly what happens in the in the bonuses, um, in the bonus episodes because. The end of this is very misleading because it sort of goes, and everybody was fine. Um, you can see that not everybody's fine. People are still touched yeah. by it, like, you know, Rose, yeah. for example. Um, so, And, for example, Nightingale is there. Um, because the darkness had touched them, um, in Alan Wake 2, for example, uh, Nightingale was taken. Like, so Nightingale doesn't, like, isn't fine. Like, he's gone. At the end of mm. this, like, so, you know, as far as they know, this, this old, uh, like, this, this FBI agent went there, uh, not under orders, went there, uh, did a bunch of research, shoved some things in a, you know, in, the, like, an event, um, in an event, then got, then there was an incident at the police station that nobody saw, because Sheriff Breaker refuses to speak of it, um, that nobody mm. saw, um, and then, actually, no, sorry, that's not true, um, that nobody saw, Sheriff Breaker did see, but she's only she's only reported it to this rather mysterious organization that turned up after this whole event called mm -hmm. the Bureau of the Federal Bureau of Control. Yep. Uh, and then said, cool, tell us everything and then no, tell, don't tell anyone or we will have you killed. So is he now like is his thing now? He obviously has to keep writing. Who, Alan? Yes. For so, some reason. OK, so Alan doesn't. So have... is he is he trying to write himself back into yes. the world? Yes. So, okay, right, all right. So there's, there's a sense of urgency because, and they will introduce this, but there's a sense of urgency because Scratch is out there. Um, the evil one. Yeah, Scra the evil Alan. Um, yeah. So uh, he, he basically, from now on, has to try to write himself out of the darkness. Um, the hard part is that the darkness is the only reason anything comes true so it has to, everything has to pass through it so he has to mm. basically try every iteration he possibly can of slight manipulation of the outside of like slight to huge manipulation of the outside world in order to set forth a series of events that would realistically free him right right so we can't just write and then uh alan wake escape from the darkness at the end <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then Scratch came back, and I tricked Scratch, and now yeah. Scratch is writing. Uh, now Scratch is here. And now I'm, Scratch uh, yeah. is a bitch on a yeah. Now he's my bitch. Yeah. Um, I have you know huge thighs and a great house. You know that kind of thing. It's just he's <laughs> <laughs> he's he just um, he has to write a, a realistic series of events that still fits yeah. within the horror genre. Okay. That's the hard part. So he has to stick within the genre. He has to stick within narrative. He has to actually write something that's believable, and he has to write yeah. just the right iteration that could get around the darkness without it realizing. Right. Okay. So it takes him thirteen years. Okay. Because at the end of this, or whatever, like um, you know, twenty, like a twenty ten is when this is set. Um, then he's gone for thirteen years. Mm -hmm. And then something happens in Alan Wake Two or whatever, and. Uh, it basically is the closest he gets to getting out. Right. Um, that's okay. without spoilers. Why was everyone annoyed with this ending? Was it because it was so vague? Um, everyone was annoyed was with the ending. Just, was because... it because it was a it's a dream type almost situation? Uh, deal? For, for two reasons. One, because they went, they nobody likes it when their efforts are in vain. Um, because yeah. as much as it's you save the princess, like you save the girl, your main guy is now trapped. 
You know, you're just yeah. like, the end, you know, then I died. Nobody likes that. Yeah. Um, I love it yeah. because I think that's completely fine. Like, th this is an ending or whatever. I was like, yeah, that's great, you know. Uh, and then they do sort of build on it a little bit in the extras, but I mean, not so much that it undoes any of it. Um, yeah. I I liked it, but people found it very confusing, probably the same way that you did. Like, the only reason that um, it was like clearer for me is because I literally read everything. Um, yeah. So it's it's basically darkness exists. He's trapped in there. He's got to write himself out. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Um, it's really difficult to do. Uh, but he's got to give it a shot. Yeah, and if I he's... played this game on my own, I definitely would have been like, um, Pete, what? Well, it's especially, I mean... It makes more sense to me than Bioshock does. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good Bioshock way of putting Infinite, that. Infinite, I'm still like, I don't know what's going on. This makes more sense to me than that does, but I was yeah. still like, uh-huh. Yeah. And then, and then it never happened. I'm like... Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's um. And then one of the world's biggest authors came to our town, and we had Deer Fest anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, it was it was like he went there. He went there. Something went down. He went missing. Nobody saw him anyway. Who cares? Um. That's that's the story from Bright Falls. Um. Right. So if anybody goes there and asks, um, they they'll say something like. There was weird shit, and a bunch of people went missing. Because even when he wrote, like, and then people came back, um, yeah. like, when he turned it back time, there's still people that never came back. Right, okay. Um, there are people who just wander around in, a, like, in a permanent fugue state. There's people who just, like, went into the woods and never came back. Um, mm -hmm. There are no bodies. Uh, so it's not like, Body. you know, then they got stabbed then they got stabbed and they found bodies, so they know that something bad happened. People just wandered yeah. off and they were gone forever. Um, yeah, okay. the the hardest part is that the darkness takes because it's it's it is metaphysical and it takes it's tied to time as well. Um, hmm. it doesn't respect it. When it takes a person, it takes an element of their past as well. Like it just sort yeah, of it, okay. it rips them it rips them right out of reality in like a really yeah. jagged hole. Um, and I mean, it's also it also doesn't help that Alan writes it that way. Like Alan, because he knows that horror has to have a, hor a horrific angle, writes mm. really nasty endings for these people. He has to. Yeah, okay. Like he do he doesn't want to be the person. Like he realizes completely that when he writes something like, and then Bob, you know, got like you know got his soul ripped apart by the darkness, and he was never mm. seen again. He's, he knows what he's writing is some poor guy called Bob who actually exists getting yeah, torn yeah. to shreds meta you know mentally yeah he knows yeah. he knows that's what's happening but he he has mm. to write a horror story um, he has no choice but to keep in the genre um, mm. otherwise he'd deviate from it um, anyway so that's Alan Wick um, there are two more like like I said there's there's I'm on. There's uh, two more specials. There's uh, the signal and the writer. Sweet. Um, so there's more to it. But uh, yeah, that's that one. That's cool. Yay.